Hey viewers, welcome to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host Dan, aka Smash I'm Ash. Today we'll be talking about solar flare close-ups, a new sunspot group. So please subscribe and share. We'll tell you why momentarily. First thing we're going to do is look at the sun in colorized magnetogram to see sunspot 2783 remaining quite stable here as well as a new sunspot group forming. It's already beta class. You'll see it form right here in the middle of your screen, kind of in the, uh, the sort of toward the top there and near the left. It's already beta class. It's got multiple umbrae. And if you're wondering where that's located, that's the SDO, which is located at Lagrange point one. And all right, we've loaded the Lasco C3. Now I would note the date stamps here. We're showing you over three days of data from the Lasco Coronagraph, which is at the Soho spacecraft, not to be confused with the SDO. And I'm just going to let that play through a couple times so you can see all of the coronal mass ejections that happened here over the past few days. So you can see that one on the 20th, as well as that one on the 18th, and that one on the 19th. So 18th, 19th, and 20th all saw coronal mass ejections. None of them were Earth-facing, particularly Maybe some small components were, but for the most part, certainly not. And just give me a moment to check out the live stream. Here we are streaming live. It's at twitch.tv slash smashamash if you'd like to see the videos as they come out. And I am in rare form today because of <laughs> various issues associated with software and data and, uh, well, <laughs> big tech companies, which is an ongoing theme on the channel. So just bear with me one quick moment here. I've just got to pull up something. And there we go. And let's head back to some more data. We're going to show you some Helio Viewer movies. First, let's talk about the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. And by the way, those Helio View movies are all from the SDO. So we're just showing you a video here to show you the way the SDO flies in this figure eight orbit around the equator. That is how it's able to maintain a view of the sun throughout the year. And this is also the reason why twice a year we get the moon getting in between the SDO and the sun. 10.7 centimeter radio flux, now back up to 82 solar flux units. Here's a one-year chart from Solon.info. And I would note here at the Space Weather Enthusiasts dashboard, Solar minimum was like right about here. And we just zoomed in on that back into about a year. Next, we're going to look at some coronal mass ejections. I'm sorry, some solar flares. <laughs> did you see what I did there? I got it confused. Allow me to get off the screen. And if you look in the lower left, you can see an active region rising behind that solar flare that happened there associated with sunspot 2783. This is the 94 angstroms view. And let me just check the life of the stream before I show some more Helio viewer movies. We're going to do some close-ups of this area as it was an interesting zone for coronal mass ejections. Actually, solar flares. All right, I'm getting a little confused today. That's what happens when you rage first thing in the morning. Yes, yes. There have been many curse words uttered and we will avoid using them in the live stream. Here it is in 131 angstroms, and that solar flare was a C-class flare that happened at exactly 1,700 hours yesterday on November 20th, 2020. Here's a close-up of the area in 171 angstroms. Right there is that solar flare. Great view in 171 angstroms, as well as some magnetic looping of iron filamentary plasma here associated with that active region rising. Probably another sunspot. And you'll see sunspot 2784 named today. Here's the same region in 100, 131 angstroms, and the, the 131 angstroms wavelength includes 10 images per minute instead of only two. It's specifically designed to analyze things like solar flares, along with 94 angstroms. Here's 304 angstroms. Fantastic view of sunspot 2783. Again, that 
solar flare of C-class happened at exactly 1700 hours universal time yesterday. And here it is in 94 angstroms. And it looks like some possible flaring activity actually came out of the magnetic loops associated with that rising region behind Sunspot 2783. Those were some uh, B-class flares. We didn't see any other brightening. Here's a colorized magnetogram. And it looks like some missing data there. We'll just move on to the smash light segment. And today's smash light segment is going to be pretty short and sweet. I would invite our viewers to, first of all, check out smashamash.com, the official website of the Smash News Network. Check out our social media links. Share the content with your friends and foes, science noobs and science pros. Also consider giving Smash staff a raise by becoming a patron and visiting the Smash O store or the Smash store. Also check out the Smash forum and our smashamash.org presents The Sun. Now seven parts in smashamash.org presents The Sun series and it is actually on a playlist also youtube.com slash smashamash slash playlists. Again if you link to that Smash O store directly from smashomash.com you will see today's featured product which is Smasher Price my first pandemic t-shirt which I am currently wearing pick one of those up perhaps again give Smash staff a raise and you can link directly to it we've also got some masks there now we've also got the we've got the are you safe mask and the are you safe yet neck gaiter as well as all things matter in various colors and our Mansa shirt is still there as well. Please make America not suck again. As it is up to you, not the government, to make America not suck again. Again, check out the social media and so on. And last but not least, if you haven't pressed like and subscribe on YouTube, I don't know what you're waiting for. We've only got about 1,600 subscribers on the channel. So have you told your friends and foes to subscribe to the channel yet? Is anybody on Earth able to forecast like we do? NOAA can't or doesn't do it. NASA can't or doesn't do it. Other channels who forecast solar activity can't or don't do it. So what are you waiting for? We've got barely 1,600 subscribers. Are you honestly trying to tell me there's no demand for accurate solar forecasting? Would you like us to shut it, vanish entirely and not have the videos free or publicly accessible anymore? Would you prefer to have two days or two hours? Notice about coronal mass ejections. Let us know in the comments. YouTube.com slash smash mash And we're also on BitChute. Thanks to our new subscribers over there. Leave us a comment if you're watching the video at BitChute. And of course, we're all over social media. Again, visit all the links at smashamash.com to find them. And once again, we are streaming live to Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash smashamash, the typical live streaming platform. Thanks to our new followers over there. And let's here's the end of today's Smash Light segment. It'll be only included in the Daily Space Weather video. And today we're not really going to talk about cosmology too much either. However, I would note that Cygnus X3 which is the most luminous intrinsic object visible from Earth in the Milky Way galaxy, the star Deneb, part of the Summer Triangle, including Altair and Vega. It has returned to a loud X-ray state from its quiescent state. So here you can see 0 0.04 is up here, near the top of its cyclic range. And we are encouraging some radio astronomers to perhaps check that out, as it is more than interesting to see what X3 is doing when it does that. Also, help us to not vanish by becoming a patron, the true source of content for the, for the, the true source of funding for the content, rather. Thanks to our patrons. And if you'd like some various perks, that we won't divulge what they are in the video, head to patreon.com slash smash 
Again, the true source of funding for the content. And we've got a lot more things to accomplish in 2020, and we need your help to do so and to increase the probability that the videos will continue to exist and remain publicly accessible. Let's get back to space weather data. Here's a real-time solar wind. And we just saw some, some pretty wild shifts here. So the top pane is showing a pretty wild shift in the BZ, which is the red line in the top pane. You can see the BZ has recently shifted from negative back into positive territory, getting all the way up to a positive six at least. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's the dangers of streaming live. So we saw the BT shift all the way from negative three up to positive six, and then drop right back down to negative five. So some south pole polarity magnetism coming through here, south solar polar field showing up. And the BT is at six, the BZ is at negative five. So also the phi angle has recently shifted all over the place at the same time that we saw a sudden increase in the solar wind speed. Probably some ejecta from one of those small coronal mass ejections. Don't expect that to last too long as we saw a pretty weak coronal hole wind stream yesterday arrive. Current solar wind density around set, around eight protons per cubic centimeter. Current solar wind speed pretty, pretty background levels here at 351 kilometers per second. Let me just check the life of the stream again. And again, if you are viewing live, leave us a comment. If you'd like anything covered, we will consider it. And we will most likely read your comments aloud here if you're viewing on Twitch. KP index, a measurement of global geomagnetism. Currently at one. And we see some oddities here in the geospace. So looking at the geospace magnetosphere movies, we're going to look at all three panes today. Here's velocity. And we see a low velocity zone here on the dawn side of the Earth, visible on the uh, equatorial plane view. You'll see this low velocity area form here. There you go. It's mainly in the magnetotail, the south dawn portion of the planet. Keep in mind, low velocity shown here in red, high velocity shown in blue. Next, we'll show you the density. We don't always show all three panes here. We usually just show the pressure. Here's the density, and that is in protons per cubic centimeter. Uh, and keep in mind, this shows high density in blue, low density in white. And here's the pressure. And these are all showing four hours of data courtesy University of Michigan. Most of the magnetohydrodynamic pressure here showing up in the magneto tail zone, shown on the right of the images. And we've seen problems with the ground geospace magnetic perturbations map, which we'll show you next here. We don't see any kind of progress there. We only see a still image. And I'll press refresh just for the sake of our viewers. Again, since we're streaming live, we'll see if that'll load. And again, you see no time elapsing here. It's just stopped showing us anything at 1300 universal time. And we're going to get to some more data here. Give me a moment. We did see a tiny spike in the proton flux barely visible. I'll bring up the one-day chart. You can see a tiny little uptick there. Nothing too exciting happening there. And that is showing up at the same time as we saw that sudden increase in the solar wind velocity, an indication that there was a small coronal mass ejection strike. Here's the x-ray flux. So we've gone from talking about coronal mass ejecta protons to talking about photons. Here's your solar flares of the past three days. And you can see that C-class flare that we showed you at the beginning of the video there coming from Sunspot 2783. And we're actually just saw an uptick here as we did the live stream. Next, looking at a star chart, I'm always interested to know what's going on above my head. I spend a lot of time looking up, and you should too. If you want to make yourself a star, a star chart, check out in-the-sky.org. 
And if you're up before dawn, you may see Venus and Mercury rising ahead of the sun. Where will you be when Cygnus rises? Find out at in-the-sky.org. Here's where stuff is in the solar system. And we're one month, exactly one month away from Jupiter and Saturn aligning in our sky. Not aligning in reference to the sun, though. That happened months ago. Please leave us a comment if you failed your earthquake forecasts associated with the solar barycenter causing a magnitude 9 earthquake when Jupiter and Saturn aligned with the Sun. Here's where stuff will be in one week. Assuming that Nibiru doesn't swing out from behind the Sun and end all life as we know it. Now I brought up the uh, seven day chart here on the GOES magnetometer because I've been calling for continued spiky readings here and you can see exactly as forecasted. How did I do it? Well, I'm not telling you because I'm not paid to tell you. And if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So there's a seven day chart. And here's what we normally show the three day chart. And you see those continued spiky readings there on the ghost magnetometer. And it all has to do with the solar magnetism being blocked by plasma as the plasma is forced to heat up and align to the magnetic fields. So here's the top view ecliptic plane field plot, part of the National Sunspot Observatory. And we will remain in the North Pole current sheet shown here in green for the at least the next 24 to 36 hours, assuming nothing changes. And keep in mind, it can suddenly change. There is also still potential for some coronal mass ejecta to happen here. Don't be surprised to see more over the next 24 to 36 hours as well. Here is the coronal hole field plot, and you can see that North Pole coronal hole stretching all the way down to the equator practically there toward the end of the video, shown in green. And it gives us better visibility when we are in the North Pole current sheet. The B field shown in blue. Here's one that also shows the Z fields. It's essentially the same view here, just with the B field, I mean with the Z fields shown in here uh, at the poles. Those are the solar polar fields green for north, red for south. Here's a field plot of just the corona itself, showing you open coronal hole field force lines in black and in purple, closed potential field force lines here in pink. Let's take a look at electrons. And we show this diagram daily to give people an understanding of what it is we're talking about. Keep in mind the highest electron flux densities are in the sun facing portion of the planet as the sun exerts all kind of all kinds of radiative pressure on the geospace and indeed the atmosphere the next image is charging hazards and we don't see any charging hazards we see very low levels of electron flux and we're expecting a bit of an uptick here i'm surprised we haven't seen it it's coming and you can see NOAA agrees, showing an uptick forecast here at the NOAA forecast. Next, this one here is the electron flux over the past three days, and you can see quite low levels. Again, expecting a significant increase in this. Here is a visualization of the total air column from the thermosphere down to your GPS handset, potentially. And once again, during times of very low electron flux, we see anomalies here around the equator at nighttime. No real surprise there, especially if you're a regular viewer of the channel. And we've seen a slight reduction here of the anomalies over North America and Canada. So a little bit of changes happening there as we approach the solstice, almost exactly a month away from the solstice today. And we will be live streaming during the solstice. Here's one slice of the atmosphere. It's the F2 ionosphere layer. It's really the whole F layer, as the F2 portion is the yellow blobs. But in any case, there's the ionosphere. We're showing you one day of data on that, courtesy Bureau of Meteorology of Australia. It's looking a little anomalous here. Here's the latest image. And we're coming at you a little late today. That's at 12 noon universal time. We're seeing some big charge ups and some big charge downs, having made it all the way to 14 megahertz there over the African rift zone near Madagascar. 
just, just at the northern tip of Madagascar there. Just the tip. Next, looking at volcanoes here over the past 24, we see a slight downtick in volcanoes. Suinose Jima, however, is still exploding, producing an unknown sized cloud of volcanic ash. Don't fly your hang glider over it. Takono's exploding as well. Flight level 070, 7,000 feet. White Island, north of New Zealand, which has killed a few people in the past year, is going, is doing an ongoing low level ash emission and a steam plume. So a bit of a phreatic eruption there as well. Revenador exploding, flight level 150. It's producing a 15,000 foot ash plume. And Sabankaya as well exploding, producing a 24,000 foot ash plume. Please don't pole vault that caldera. It could be unhelpful. And we need you to share our content on social media since we don't, since we have less traction than, uh, than uh, uh, an ice skater without ice skates on ice. Next, looking at earthquakes over the past 24, we see some deep quakes kicking off, such as this 4.8 in New Zealand, happening about 22 hours and 15 minutes ago. Deep quake strikes Alaska, deep quake strikes Peru, deep quake strikes Tonga. So quite a few deep quake quakes there already, another Peruvian deep quake. Uh, the largest of the past 24 must be that 5.6 at Chile. Let's continue up the list here in order. Afghanistan sees a quake over four, over 200 kilometers depth. There's one in the Caribbean at the Dominican Republic, a 3.6 at 145 kilometers. Here's a 4.6 at 98 kilometers. So a whole bunch of deep quakes kicking off, as well as an incredibly shallow quake here at Hawaii. Let's take a look at that one. It's at a depth of 200 meters above sea level. Yes, a negative depth. Is it right below Mauna Loa? Well, it's certainly not. It's directly under the main calderas of Kilauea. A magmatic quake for sure. And let's move on to some more data. Here's nullschool.net and check out the 250 hectopascal anticyclone here over the eastern northern hemisphere. Anticyclones rotate clockwise in the northern hemisphere and are associated with high pressure zones. Here are the jet streams of the western world, I think. There we go. And let's take a look at surface winds real quick. There are your surface winds for the west. Some some heavy onshore winds there on the southern coast of Alaska. Next, we're looking at Witty.com. As high pressure continues to dominate the lower 48, some serious low pressure systems are creeping up on Alaska. Let's see where the GFS forecast expects things to be at 12 noon tomorrow. There's 12 noon tomorrow. I'm going to rock this back to show you the motion. We prefer to advance this manually as it is too slow for impatient people like me. Please leave us a comment if you think you're less patient than I am. No, I'm not willing to have a contest. I don't have enough patience to have a contest with you about impatience. Next, looking at lightningmaps.org to see quite a lot of lightning. Next time you hear thunder, check it out. Yowzers. It's a major global lightning event here. Quite a bit of lightning striking over the past few hours. Here's what's going on over the U.S. and Caribbean. And we see continued lightning over the Caribbean, all the way up to Bermuda, practically. Leave us a comment if you know how weird the Sargasso Sea is. Yes, it's a strange place. A strange, strange place. Perhaps even stranger than the Smash News Network. And thanks again, everybody, for tuning in to the Smash News Network. We've got additional bonus features, some more meteorology stuff. Here's the U.S. Doppler radar map. How about a U.S. cloud map? Yeah, I know, it's dark. We use the NASA GOES Interactive Weather Satellite's short wave radiation map at 3.9 nanometers. I would note all the low clouds over the North Atlantic there off the coast of the Outer Banks and so on. This area right here 
rife with low clouds. Here's a water vapor map. And we've got this long string of dry air going all the way from Newfoundland down to uh, San Francisco, basically. No need to zoom in on that, but there is need to tell our viewers to stay tuned as we've got bonus of features. We've got a vanishing host who's who would like to thank you for viewing the video and flying American Smashways and remind you to keep your head and arms inside the smash plane at all times. We're going to show you a two-day video of the sun, the local yellow dwarf, in 193 angstroms. We're also going to show you the colorized magnetogram to show you the most current update in very, very high resolution of the solar magnetic fields and the intensity gram to show you the umbrae of Sunspot 2783 and Sunspot 2784. And there is the colorized magnetogram. Here's Sunspot 2783. Still significant, still stable. Still alpha class, apparently. We'll let you know on the next frame. And here's Sunspot 2784. And you can see it's already beta class. It's got a North Pole leading umbra, a South Pole trailing series of umbrae. Beta class. So the likelihood of coronal mass ejections and solar flares has gone up a bit. Here's a close-up of Sunspot 2783. Where'd you go? And it, it's pretty stable here. It might have degraded slightly since yesterday. Nothing to really report on there. And there's Sunspot 2784. I'd say there's about a 99% chance of this getting named today. Let's close things out with a 193 angstrom view showing a massive Earth-facing coronal hole here. And just give that a minute to load. We'll let it play all the way through. Again, it's 48 hours from the SDO in 193 angstroms, which is another ionized state of iron plasma. It's UV emission spectral lines. Some filamentary activity there behind Sunspot 2784 as well. And here you go. There's the full disc view over the past two days. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, stare at the sun, don't drink, and if you do, don't drive. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Please visit our sites as we are tanking over here. Share the content on your social media, etc. We'll be coming out with at least one more video today. And may that solar wind be at your back.